Thank you. Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Cabinet on the 29th of August 2024. Just to remind members and everyone else that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Do we have any apologies? Uh, Councillor Daniel is going to be about five minutes late. But Thank you. Apologies. And item two, declarations of interest. If it's not been noted, may, may I uh, 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 make an apology for Councillor Smith, please? Thank you. Um, declarations of interest, then, are there any interests to be declared by the committee? No. So, question um, item three, question time, and we haven't had any questions received. So it's straight to item four, matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedures. And we have Councillor Wells here for Councillor Smith with uh, recommendations from corporate scrutiny. Over to you. Councillor. Thank you very much, Councillor Dean. Me already. Um, I'm here to really report on the update for the leaseholder strategic review, which was held at the Corporate Scrutiny Committee on the 13th of August. Originally, there were eight recommendations brought before the committee uh, based upon the report from the uh, Campbell and Tickle report. Um, I'm actually going to do it in reverse order because there were a block of recommendations which the committee felt they, they, they were quite happy to um, endorse and to accept. And I'm going to take you through those, please. Um, they were originally, I'm going to use the original um, numbering, which was item two, which is the endorsement for the content of section 20 notices produced by Campbell Tickle and approving and, and submitting to, Campbell, uh, to Cabinet for consideration. It was item three for the approval, recommending to Cabinet that the consultation commences in relation to the remedial works identified in the Campbell Tickle report. Item four, which was the recommendation to Cabinet to approach the undertaking of remedial works, this is as opposed to the full re-roofing renewals. Five was for the continued um, support for the working arrangements with Campbell Tickle to produce a formal leaseholder policy, and six, supporting the instruction of legal services to commence amendments to future leases to include a management charge and to clarify the position in relation to major works and renewal with any amendments to the approval by cabinet for implementation. So those are the things that came through. What the scrutiny committee um, felt they wanted to amend was item one and this, the, the amendment was to strongly recommend that the cabinet adopt the recommendations of the report produced by uh, Campbell Tickle. There was a recommendation, there was also an amendment to item eight, um, which was asking that the um, council further develops a service improvement plan and further that that should come back to the corporate scrutiny committee. There were then two further proposals that were put forward really um, really by way of trying to help um, uh, improve some of the shortcomings that were identified in that report. The first one really was to, uh, for the portfolio holder and the officers to devise an appropriate goodwill payment using industrial industry standards as a small gesture from the council to those residents in the light of the inconvenience and worry caused during this period of uncertainty and further to seek approval from the Scoot Scrutiny Committee for that proposal. And finally, um, that the Cabinet should consider the adoption of a plain English crystal mark or similar alternative across the board for all Tamworth Borough Council communications. Uh, and that really concluded um, the recommendations from the scrutiny committee on that item. Thank you. Councillor Wells, has any of the Cabinet got any questions on this? No? Um, Right. If I can just respond to a couple of those points, and the the one around the goodwill gesture, we have asked officers to look at that and what what way this could be implemented, if at all. But the pr the problem with doing this for this group of people is that we are then setting a precedent. So it, it is something we're going to have to look at, and we will bring back to the cabinet meeting on October the tenth 
when this is looked at um, thoroughly and the, the actual recommendations come back through Cabinet. But there, there is an issue around this of it being for one group of people and we need to make sure that anything that we did do was legal and above board and we were not you know, setting a precedent on this. With regard to the crystal mark, I know at the time when this was brought up at that scrutiny meeting, I was really keen that we have something along these lines. Um, it turns out that the English crystal mark has its own issues with the way it works. Um, I understand that it, it isn't uh, an, a thing for the organisation, it is more for people. Tanya, would you like to just say a little bit, because Tanya has, and the comms team have been doing a lot of work around this anyway. They've already been looking at it before this came up. So there, there is stuff going on in the background because we have for quite a while recognised that some of our communications are in a jargon that, you know, is maybe not appropriate. So, Tanya? Thank you. Um, so just to explain, we've we've kind of already started on this journey. Um, so we've we've instigated some plain English training that is um, happening in a couple of weeks, um, and hopefully that will start to um, see benefits at all of our communications that we've got going out to residents. Um, we're also I've, I've looked in detail about crystal marks. So crystal marks, um, um, you you get them for each document. Um, and there's a quite a cost attached to each document. You can't get a blanket authority crystal mark, so it's per document. And so we would need to pay um, in the region of £500 for each document we want to be crystal marked. Um, so obviously that could be a considerable sum. It, depending on what, what you decide um, which documents. Um, there's also another option with a approved by logo, which is for things like newsletters and regular things go out as well. That could be an option. But again, that's a, a one-off fee of £500 or, or 550 and an, and an annual fee of another £500 on top of that. So there, there is quite considerable costs um, associated with it. That doesn't say that it's, it isn't something that we should do. We potentially could be thinking about, you know, one document that we could test this out and then upskill our staff so making sure that we're working in those principles and then look at how we can roll that out longer term to improve the communications with local people yeah certainly um thank you very much and i appreciate this is my comment not that of the scrutiny committee because i i haven't spoken to them about this so i can't can't venture that but I think really the sentiment behind the comment really was work but one of clear communication um, I myself funnily enough today have been reading through various reports that, that, that I've generated on, on, on other fronts and have looked at ways of seeing how we we could measure some of that communication and been educated myself on on the likes of I think I don't I'm only get butcher the pronunciation but I'll give it to you anyway um, flesh or flesh depending on where the kinade are you probably aware of that so it's, it's a measure and it believe it or not it comes straight out of words so it can give you an idea that my learned colleague here probably knows all about it but it gives you an idea of of where that should sit it used to be known as a fog index many years ago and and certainly uh, national newspapers certainly of the uh, red top variety shall we say not politics aside I'm just saying of that of the mass market used to have a specific standard for which they aim for for common understanding and I would suggest that what we're looking for is a commitment really uh, that communications have I understand the need for contractual language but I think alongside that we need a sort of a easy guide if I might put it that way that's just my thought I'm just putting it out there thank you for that Councillor Wells I think we are on that journey aren't we we're, we're looking at Maybe not going down that route of the crystal mark because we don't want to be spending five hundred pounds every time we send a letter out. But we need to make sure that our staff are upskilled in the plain English because I, I know myself. Sometimes you can the the bad language can just creep in the office speak, as I call it, where you use words that perhaps you know may not be easily accessible to other people. So we need to make sure that we're we're making it accessible to everyone. Right. Um, anybody got any more comments there? No? I, I think what we need to do with this then is, um, as everyone knows, this whole um, um, piece of work is coming to scrutiny on October the 10th. And we will be looking to look at all the recommendations then 
so that um, Cabinet can look through all the paperwork properly because the only thing that's come to us today are your recommendations rather than with the background of all the papers and Cabinet need to see all those papers to make that recommendation. So that will come on October the 10th and the decision will be made then. But we will come, we can come back to you with a written response on what I've said now for it to go to your scrutiny committee. Thank you. Um, we now have the report of the Chair of Infrastructure, Safety and Growth, the annual garden waste subscription charge. Thanks, Marion. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the meeting on the 22nd of August, we reconsidered looking at um, the charge for the green waste because members previously had wanted to see a breakdown of the details to the, of the cost specifically for the green waste service. We had those in front of us and as a result of that we make the recommendation that the, to improve to approve the increase of the annual subscription fee to £41, effective of the 1st of January 2025, uh, with the sign-up windows open in October. And as a caveat to that, on the very first report, there was a uh, recommendation three that everything should go up in line with CPI. And we had, um, in our information that we were given at our last meeting, it showed that if we had gone up with CPI, the actual cost of the bin would have gone up to £46 something, and actually it only cost £41. So I think the recommendation that Councillor Adams made very forcefully in the first meeting is that we shouldn't always be uh, driven by CPI figures. Thank you. Thanks for that, Marion. Um, does anyone have any questions on this? No? Right, then the recommendation before us is approve the increase of the annual subscription fee to £41 effective from the 1st of October 2024 with the sign-up window open in October. I think that should say, oh, well, yeah, we're doing it now. So it's as from now, anyone who pays for the 2025 will pay it a fee of £41. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Mover, seconder. All those in favour? Thank you. On to item five, comments, complaints, compliments, and complaints, I nearly missed compliments out. <sighs> um, so we have this report here. I hope everybody's been able to go through it. It is quite meaty. Um, there's an awful lot here for us to look at. So... The purpose of this is, is to notify the Cabinet of this report and the recommendations. No, I'm looking at the wrong paper there. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Where is that coming? Mm. Somebody's given me some papers from somewhere else. <laughs> right. Um, is there anything you'd like to say about this, Zoe, while I find my papers? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the, um, the report is um, to seek approval from um, Cabinet uh, for, to approve the annual complaints performance and service improvement report and also to approve our updated comments, compliments and complaints policy. I do appreciate there is a lot of pages in there, but it is, um, it is really important that um, we get this approval so that we can actually submit, our, um, submit an annual submission to the Housing Ombudsman in line with the requirements by the 5th of September. Um, I'm happy to take any questions on any specific parts, elements of the report. Um, it is linked into the requirements of the Ombudsman, plus we have um, amended the policy um, in line with the changes to um, the Ombudsman Co uh, Housing Ombudsman Code, which became statutory on the uh, 1st of April 2024. Thank you for that. And can I thank the team for the amount of work that's gone into this? I know we've been going against a deadline here to, to make sure that this is all got done in time. Has anybody got any questions? Yes, Nova. Um, thank you. Just wondered, so I read the bit, it's interesting about the elected members being responsible and that being the last point of um, 
complaint. I just wondered about that and if you could explain it some more because I read in the notes and it seems like an interesting idea for now and I just wonder about the future proofing of it and like does it always, yeah, I just wonder if you could explain the thinking behind it. Thank you. Um, this is a new element in the um, Ombudsman Code. Um, so um, the reason we've got two members responsible for complaints is because Councillor Dean, as leader of the council, is corporately responsible for all complaints. But then um, Councillor Clark is um, responsible with his portfolio, due to his portfolio, for housing complaints. And it is, this is directly linked to the um, Housing Ombudsman Code. I think my question is because we're elected what is the what happens if they don't if they don't if they're not responsible for the complaints do, like how do you hold councillors responsible for ensuring that complaints are properly dealt with if they're the last line of thank you the councillors are holding uh, hold the officers responsible for making sure that the complaints are dealt with effectively Thanks for that. So the other way round. <laughs> yeah, certainly. The other question, and it might not be part of this report, but it leads back, it comes back around to what um, Councillor Wells was talking about, which is how do we make sure that the complaints procedure is clear to the tenants um, and it is communicated to them in plain English and that it's obvious that they can complain and what is a complaint and all of the all of those things that were part of this report, which I mean, it took me some reading, <laughs> and if I was cross and wanted to complain, I feel like that would be quite difficult for me to understand. Thank you. Part of it, this is that um, following publication, where we, we will be doing some communications with residents to ensure that they un understand. Um, we have various different mechanisms of um, talking to residents, um, and we will be doing things in the uh, tenant newsletters, and as we move towards social housing regulator inspection, we'll be doing more and more work with tenants on that. So it's Tanya and Tim are going to be assisting us with this and making sure it's plain English going back to Councillor Wells. Thank you for that. I think as we go forward, there, there is quite a lot of communications that are going to be going out, isn't there? And it'll give us opportunity to make sure those numbers and email addresses are properly done. And that, that's part of what we've been saying all along is about being clear and transparent and people have got to be able to find those things easily. So that's um, really good. And yeah, once again, thank you for all that work that's gone into it. So uh, we have before us then um, the recommendations are approve the annual complaints performance and service improvement report 23-24 for submission to the housing ombudsman and approve the updated comments, complaints, compliments, policy for publication and implementation. Oh, struggling with compliments. A mover and a seconder, please. No, that's seconder. Yeah, all those in favour? Thank you. On to the meaty bit of the, uh, the day then. Item six, quarter one performance report 24-25. Um, has anybody got any comments on this report? We're all happy with what Becky's given us. <laughs> yeah, I th yes, I think we must say thank you for the work on this because this is really um, in depth. Um, so, n no, nothing from anybody. So, can I? How the recommendation is that the cabinet endorse the content of the report. Can I have a mover and a seconder and all those in favour? Thank you. Item seven then is Becky's again, the write-offs for the 1st of April 24 to the 31st of June 24. So this is quarter one performance. And um, as we will know from talking about this before, these are the, the write-offs are the things that officers have tried several times and with, to no avail. There, there is all sorts of reasons why these write-offs are here. Would you like to just go through those, those main reasons why we end up here, Becky? Do you mind just reminding councillors? Thanks. Thank you. So, um, <coughs> as you'll be aware, um, we do have a number of write-offs 
each year. Uh, it's not a, for, for those debts that are raised um, and for various different reasons. It might be, it might be that um, through people, maybe um, circumstances have changed or they are, they are um, maybe passed away so they are or, or unable to pay and we have, we have moved and not able to trace them, for example. We do make every effort to collect all debts that are owed to us and they are um, and we do um, we have a, um, a policy of, of writing those debts off they will go to the bad debt reserve um, and um, occasionally we have one um, that needs uh, the threshold is ten thousand pounds to come here for write-off you've got one of those in front of you today You'll notice there is an increase in the in the quarter one write-offs compared to last year, and and that's that's relating mostly to um, what's it, during COVID we, we 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 delayed we didn't have a lot of court action because the courts were closed and when following the COVID years we were concentrating on trying to collect those debts and we're now at a point where we've we feel that we've reached the threshold of what we're able to collect, which is why you'll see a, a, an increase this year on the quarter one collection rate as the um, the write off rates. So, um, so yeah, so the, the recommendations on, on the report are to um, approve the write off of irrecoverable debt um, for the housing benefit overpayment, the 18,679.53, and your details you'll see in Appendix F. Thank you. Thank you for that, Becky. And th yeah, there just has to be some realism that there is, it becomes unviable. And I know with some of the business <coughs> ones that we do, companies go out of um, business, so there is, there is a limit to what you can do. So the um, recommendation before you is that Cabinet endorse the amount of debt written off for the period of the 1st of April 2024 to the 30th of June 2024, um, Appendix A to A, and approve the write-off of irrecoverable debt for the housing benefit overpayments of £18,679.53p. And that's on Appendix F, respectively. Do I have a mover? Thank you. And a second up. Yeah, all those in favour? Thank you. And more finance. At item 8 is the annual report of the Treasury Management Service and the actual prudential indicators, 23-24. Has anybody got any questions? Or oh, Becky? I'm going to say for Becky, sorry. <laughs> Once again, another meaty piece of um, work, and thank you to the team for getting this done. So we'll go straight to the recommendation then that um, the cabinets endorse the recommendations in this report, which are approve the actual 23-24 prudential and treasury indicators within the report and shown at Appendix 1, and note the annual treasury management report for 23-24. i move that. And a second there, yeah. All those in favour? Thank you. Item 9, the Budget and Medium Term Financial Planning Process 25-26. This is the report on where we go as we go forward to um, putting together the MTF for 25-26. Becky, would you like to go through the... Um, the planning process have you got the dates in front of you thank you so uh, this report is the start of the it kicks off the budget process for 25 26 um, it's it's laying out the timetable for, for members so you can see you can see um, how how the budget is going to be developed and approved so um, uh, the, in, the, in the front report, um, it shows you a summary of the medium term financial strategy as was approved in February. Um, and you'll see from there that we are expecting a deficit position, a starting point for 25, 26, a uh, deficit position of 3.2 million pounds as a starting point. Um, we know there are some additional pressures that we're expecting to come through in 25, 26. So, um, it's likely that we would be in a, a worsening position than, than that 
um, once we start the budget process. Um, so we developed the budget stability review. Um, uh, it was approved by cabinet, and so uh, there's a summary of that in, in this report that shows uh, the areas that we're looking to try to make some savings. Starting off with 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 asking budget managers to to identify savings within their budgets in this current year. Also looking at. Um, looking at some areas where we can start delving in in a bit more depth and do some zero-based budgeting to, to start building budgets up from scratch to, to really scrutinize those budgets. Um, and also looking in the medium to longer term areas where we can transform maybe the way that we deliver some services. So it's, it's trying to break down the savings that we make into those that we can make in in the next year or two years and then develop things that will might take us a little more time to develop and implement um, in, in the medium term. So um what would we just shoot down? So you'll see that we're um we're looking at developing those budgets and then we're bringing them back at various points throughout the process to members to, to scrutiny, to scrutinize and, and those dates are set out in the appendices. So um, I think unless you've got any questions or if there's anything else you'd like me to run through in any more detail. That's it. No, a question, yeah. <laughs> Thanks Carol, thank you Becky. Um, what's zero base budgeting, sorry? So uh, zero-based budgeting is, is quite often when you, you start at a starting point of your budget for last year and you might just have an incremental base, so you might increase it a little bit or make some changes that you know about. But every um, it's um, a recognised good practice every now and then to go back from the start, from the service that you're trying to provide and look at what you provide, what you need to provide and what the costs are associated with that and build the budget right from scratch again. So it's starting from nothing and building it up rather than just starting with last year's budget and making your known changes. So we're trying to pick some of the, the larger budget areas. We're going to select some areas um, to have a look at and, and try and do some of those areas each year. My second and final question. Um, I'm looking on page five, just above where it says in bold, options considered. Um, I just wondered if you could explore a tiny bit more in um, the paragraph that says, it should be noted that the complexity of some of the issues and the reliance on the government for business rates retention and RSG data to report will mean that some reports have to be treated as urgent or considered later. Um, could you just explain to me, and I'm sorry I don't know, a bit more on what some of the government issues might be with that? Just trying to find the paragraph. Um, what she said <laughs> thank you sorry i've gone to the individual item um right. as part of the report package sorry so so we do get some of the information um from from the um, business rates uh, does come through quite late on in the process for budgeting so it, it might be that oh not might be it, it is the case that we don't get all the information that we need to quite late on in January so so we can prepare the the expenditure side of the budgets but until we know where, where, what grant we're getting from the revenue support grant from the government and where we are in the position for business rates um, some of that information is estimated till quite late on in the process uh, uh, but and, and then but you know we, we can estimate it usually fairly well um, um, but it well we won't have final figures till January really so, okay sorry Yeah, thank you. Um, just a quick question, really, on the, um, I mean, <clears throat> you've got some um, targets that you've sort of set, 
Um, how realistic are, how realistic are these targets that we potentially you know, could meet them? Um, and also, for the, for the service transformation a bit, you've got a target in each of 2007-2008 two thousand seven, two of a million pounds. So is that one million the first year and then two million? Is that an extra million on the second year or is that sort of rolled up over those two years? See what I mean? I'm not quite sure what what has been saved on each of those financial years. We're looking at trying to identify a million pounds in each of those years, and and they are very challenging targets. Uh, I I agree that they're not going to be easy to meet. But if you look at the deficits that we're facing in the table above. We do need to make those savings in order to bring ourselves into a balanced budget while we've still got the reserves to support and underlie the budget. So those deficit figures can be supported by the general fund reserve that we've got for the next two or three years, depending on, on, on outturn this year and, and um, how the budget setting goes. Um, but at that point, we will need to have made those savings in order to balance the budget while we well, we still have the reserves to support us. So challenging, I agree they are, but necessary also. Thank you. I think at this point it would probably be a good idea if I said thank you to all the officers of the council for the work that they've got to do in trying to put this right. You know, the meetings I've been sitting in with you have left us under no illusion of what the job is and how difficult it's going to be. So thank you to everyone who's trying to find where those savings can be without us actually losing any services because that's, that's the main thing. We need to make sure that those, those services people rely on are still there and it, it is going to be a very tough piece of work. So thank you for all that you've been doing. So are there any more questions? So the recommendation before us is the proposed process for the general fund and housing revenue account budget and medium term financial planning process for 2025-26 be adopted and delegated authority be given to the executive director of finance in conjunction with the leader to approve any amendments to the draft survey as attached to appendix E before finalisation. Can I have a mover and a second there? All those in favour? Thank you very much. And yeah, please take our thanks back for all the work that's been done on this. So item 10 are the proposals for the Tamworth Strategic Partnership. And I'm going to hand over to Sarah for this to do this one, please. Jo, fancy a bit of a double team conversation with the group. Um, I'm really excited about this proposal. Um, I feel that it brings together a lot of what we've been discussing in terms of communication, as raised by Andy, about transparency, about action that goes across the town, not just from the council, but from a different organisations. I think Marin raised with hers. And it's yeah, about the idea of having more of a strategy and more of a formal way in which various groups across the town can work together to develop basically ideas and support some of our most vulnerable. Um, we know that is a challenge at hand. We've been discussing it for years and now we get this great opportunity both in what we can do as a cabinet, as a council and that's something that Joe's been working on. Um, the timing of this, I think, is quite important. Um, you raised this with me a, quite a few weeks ago and then the events of the start of August happened within the town and it wasn't only the stream within the council, <coughs> which is Carol knows worked extremely hard to make sure that the events that happened at the hotel were quickly cleared up. We worked closely with the police and the kind of volunteer element that came in was astounding. Action now needs to follow and Joe already had ideas in place and this is going to be a way to bring this all together. I hand over to Joe Sands. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, you, you, members have the, the proposals in front of them. Um, we, ha we have tried to link in those thematics across a partnership, and actually they are starting to really well combine with the new strategic view of the council. Um, so on the 10th, um, you know, pending approval, uh, we'll want to take the, there are about 30 or so um, 
mem people come in from various different organisations, strategic leaders across the town. We want to explore with them what their partnership, their plans are, how we can collaborate. And as, as uh, Councillor Daniel said, yes, definitely look at that co community cohesion aspect across across everything that we do together as partners. Um, so it's really just to seek those and, and understand those thematics. They can be discussed on the 10th. Have we got them right? Do we need to add anything? Um, and move from there for sort of formal agendas in terms of reference um, to move forward with, with building a Tamworth plan, which is not just a council plan. It, it's, it, it's belonged and co-produced by organisations and voluntary groups in Tamworth. Um, and, and then go from there with the different um, sort of operational groups and focus groups to actually put into place some of these plans where we as a council do not operate service, we do not provide services, but we are that conduit um, and can prove, you know, provide that sort of sc scrutiny or questioning and make sure that the people of Tamworth are served. So that's the, the recommendations are there. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I think that's the key point, isn't it? We may be the council, but we can't do these things on our own. We need to be calling in those other partners for some of this, this especially around our cohesion um, work. So has anybody got any questions? Yeah. I just want to say thanks, guys. This is really cool, and I'm really glad that this is happening because, no, because I, I really, I've spoken to other people working in other councils about how difficult it is for people to access the services they need and having this kind of work go on it makes me really proud of the council so thank you it's it's really cool uh, yep Yeah, uh, just to echo what Councillor Daniel said uh, it couldn't come at a better time it says here about how um, there hasn't been a, a partnership well strategic plan in place since 2019 since before COVID um, my only sort of concern would be that it mentions here about um, the organisations have been invited, but if we had com confirmation from ma the majority of these uh, services which you've uh, noted here, um, because typically, well not typically, but sometimes we do have, um, we are told in, in council meetings that, that uh, other organisations have been asked to comment and then there's no comments and then that always raises concerns with scrutiny. So. Yeah, I can confirm that the, the vast majority of those organisations or representation is there. Uh, we've, we've also managed to, um, through the health and wellbeing, that's, that's coming through with public health and the integrated care board. Uh, whilst there may not be a specific person there yet at that meeting, we will certainly make sure that it's involved and then goes back through the health and wellbeing. So at, at this point in time, yeah, we are expecting around 30 people um, across all those sectors. Thanks, that's really good. We'll look forward to that date. And I hope as many people as possible can manage to get along and support it. Any more questions? So the um, recommendations before you then are endorsed proposals for the development of a refreshed local strategic partnership and support the relaunch of the partnership on the 10th of September 2024. Can I have a mover? And a second there. And all those in favour? That is fabulous. Thank you very much for that. We now move to item 11, exclusion of the press and public. And the recommendation is that members of the press and public now be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item on the grounds that the business involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12a to the local government act 1972 as amended can i have a mover and a second that all those in favor thank you 